Junior Achievement of Northeastern Pennsylvania. Keystone Edition is presented by Agora Cyber Charter School. Live from your public media studios, WVIA presents Keystone Edition Business, a public affairs program that goes beyond the headlines to address issues in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. This is Keystone Edition Business. And now, moderator, Chris Jones. Welcome to Keystone Edition. I'm your host, Chris Jones. The typical nine to five workday is changing and the pandemic is playing a big part in that. About seven months ago, many businesses across Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania had to close their doors on short notice. They couldn't just have employees not working, so they had to adapt. Are you someone who now works from home? Or are you in an industry that can't use a distributed workforce? We want to hear how you're adapting and the issues you're facing. We have experts ready to help. You can reach out by phone at 1-800-326-9842, email at keystone at wvia.org, or on social with the hashtag Keystone Business. But first, WVIA's Paul Lazar takes a look at how that's affecting workers, business, and the future. Earlier this year, people around the country and here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania went home from work and never went back. Months later, desks are empty and office buildings are dark. Now, couches and dining rooms are workspaces. Video calls have replaced meetings. Many businesses had to scramble to keep things running while obeying the governor's stay-at-home order. Managers prepared employees to work from home for a few weeks, a month at most. In some cases, the transition was just a bump in the road. For others, productivity took a hit as workers and technology had to adjust. Still other companies like Twitter have found that a distributed workforce works so well that they're making the change permanent. Zoom has been a big winner in all of this. The app that allows up to 100 people to join a video call reported a maximum of 10 million users a day in December 2019. In March of this year, that number reached 200 million as people searched for a way to meet, have class, and have face-to-face -face interactions without being in the same room. Part of the struggle for many has been maintaining a work-life balance as that line blurs. Compounding that has been the fact that workers who are also parents now need to become teachers as schools try to mitigate the spread of the virus through virtual learning. The phrase, the new normal, has been tossed around a lot the last few months, but the question is, is a distributed workforce here to stay? The short answer is, maybe. A report from NPR shows an average employer can save about $11,000 a year for every person who works remotely half the time. That same report found more than three quarters of workers say they're fully productive at home and their managers are satisfied with their performance. But there are downsides. Many people who work remotely report feeling lonely and isolated, and some believe collaboration suffers. For Keystone Edition, I'm Paul Lazar. Let's introduce our guests. Dr. Matt Sauchik is joining us tonight via Zoom. He's currently an assistant professor of leadership development at the University of Florida, but he's a native of the Wyoming Valley who started his career at Wilkes University. Monica Marshallonis is here in the studio. She is the Human Resources Director at Borton Lawson in Wilkes-Barre. And Jennifer Saramboli is a corporate mindfulness expert from Studio B in Wilkes-Barre. Welcome. Thank you. Matt, we're going to start with you. You're considered one of the foremost leaders on this, this new normal for all of us. You know, you heard some of the numbers in the introduction. More people are using Zoom than ever before. Can you give us your perspective on, on how we're doing? How, how are employees doing and employers doing at this? Yeah, much, Chris. I, I really appreciate the question. And I think we're doing great at, at this point. If you think a little bit about how innovation happens, how rollouts happen, usually it takes a lot longer. But because of this pandemic, we were able to kind of spring into action with rolling out into this online platform. And as the introduction said, it's happened everywhere. So people haven't had a chance to say, should I do it? Should I not do it? Everybody has jumped right into it. And I think some of the outcomes that we're seeing are directly caused to people not having the anxiety about, should I do it or should I not do it? But figuring out how do I make it work? And I think being able to make it work has really put us at the forefront of moving this to the next step and having more companies kind of embrace at least a hybrid model, but maybe even moving all their employees to this. Really, really interesting. Monica, you know, 
You're an HR director at a very recognizable local, local firm in Borton Lawson. Did this new normal come as a surprise, and how did you guys at Borton Lawson handle it? Um, we, we certainly had to move quickly, uh, of course. Um, we had very little time to prepare. We needed to reach out to our folks and kind of find out what technology did we need, what equipment did we need, uh, what platform were we going to communicate with. So we had to move quickly and, and luckily we found once everybody was home that it really did work well. We were quite surprised how well it really did work for us. We'll dive more into this idea of it's working well. Jen Saramboli, you know, um, I so admire you because I think you're a resource for, for all of us that are going through this. Really, my perspective on this is that we're going through this together. You're a mindfulness coach. You're also the founder of the project on the river, the Susquehanna River, that provides free yoga to people in our community. My question for you is, do you have any tips for employees uh, that are dealing with this, that are working from home and they have, maybe they have kids in cyber school. There's a lot of stress out there, Jen. So can you reflect and give us your perspective on this? Yeah, you know, it is working and we were thrown into a situation that no one ever expected, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, many of us adapted very quickly. A lot of creativity and innovation has been uh, part of this transition. However, we can't deny that it's been incredibly stressful um, on workers. It's been incredibly stressful on leadership, on management within companies. And we're losing that human connection. Mm -hmm. um, so when stress manifests in a way where we're unsure of the outcome, we, so there's a lot of uncertainty. And when stress is behaving in a way where we have very little control over the situation, um, those two components put together uh, really takes a toll mm -hmm. on people. Um, so it's, it's, you know, a, there's a combination of things going on. There's a lot of isolation, a lot of overwhelm, um, tremendous uncertainty, and this groundlessness of the situation. Um, and so we're, what we're seeing is, is tremendous uh, impact on women in the mm -hmm. workforce. We saw 865,000 women leave their careers mm -hmm. in the month of September. There were 200,000 men that left their careers. Um, so we have this interesting uh, dialogue happening because a lot of people that are working from home cannot manage the responsibilities that they're trying to uh, get through each day. It's, it's almost impossible to uh, work full time and also school your children full time. So we're seeing this mom exodus, they're calling it. Jen, if you don't mind, we're going to stick with you for another minute or so. Yeah, sure. I think this is such an important issue. Tell us at Studio B, you work with people to try to help them develop strategies to reduce stress and to create, I would imagine, uh, a more productive environment. So can you just give us a tip or two from your experience as an expert on this topic? Absolutely. Well, first of all, stress is just a normal part of being human. Um, and we're not, we really can't reduce stress. It's, it's changing our relationship to stress. So we could learn ways in which we could meet stress in healthier ways so we don't feel so yanked around by it all the time. Uh, and when we develop that relationship with stress, it, it feels less overwhelming. Um, we, we don't have the neurological and cognitive impact of stress kind of derailing us. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly better for our interpersonal relationships. And of course, if all that's happening, then productivity could remain steady or be increased. Uh, concentration and uh, focus can improve. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots and lots of uh, ways in which we can, we can help people or teach people how to self-regulate. Mm -hmm. uh, and that ripples out to all their personal relationships and professional relationships. Awesome. Dr. Sauchik. Uh, tell us more about some of the tools and the platforms that you're seeing. Let's go beyond Zoom, if you don't mind. You know, what are some of the tools and the platforms that people are using uh, that are really sort of enhancing productivity, organizational management, communication, and the like? 
Yeah, and those are so important, Chris. I, I really love this piece of talking about individual kind of developments, and it really is true when we talk about stress. This is very different than the work at home before the pandemic, when an individual would roll out and the management would be able to take their time and make sure that that one individual had the things that they needed to, one, not feel stressed, but also set up structures, understand how the culture was still gonna be relevant for them. This was very different. We didn't just roll one person out in an organization, we rolled the whole organization out at the same time. So there was those individual stressors, but there were organizational stressors. So when we talk about how do we communicate better and how do we structure the organization better, that becomes really, really important. You mentioned Zoom, and that is certainly one that has taken off. I was in a training today and somebody had said, oh, you know, I, this is my first time using Zoom and it caught everyone off guard. And then they went and said, no, no, I, I usually use Microsoft Teams. So the joke has now become, you may not have used Zoom ever, but you have used something. And it, maybe it's Microsoft Teams and that seems like a platform that's more engaging for people who meet more than just kind of once for a webinar or a, a seminar um, from that standpoint. It's something where you can upload different documents and, and communicate on a more regular basis. Things like Slack is a wonderful tool where you can communicate with small teams and have different channels where you're being able to talk to people, see who's on, maybe even hold people accountable for working throughout the day. And once again, you can share different things. I've seen Monday.com work really well. There's Trello. Those are both management platforms where you can do project management and you can share data across and really get everybody on the same page. Thanks, Matt. Monica, let's come back to you. So at Borton Lawson, did, are you guys fully remote now? Or are you hybrid? Can you tell us a little bit more about the model that you're using? So initially, we, were, we all went home. Um, we went re all remote. And then we slowly staggered back into the office. Um, so as we worked through the remote, we realized how well it was working. So before we all returned, we gave people the option. We said, we, we came up with this new policy. We created a whole new remote work policy for people and let them decide what do they want to do. Most of our people, um, about 65 of our 145 employees, have chose to work from home, mostly in a hybrid model. There are very few that uh, are continuing to work 100% at mm -hmm. home. The hybrid model has seems to be most popular with, with our company. Are you in sort of a wait and see right now before you uh, decide whether to go fully remote, to bring people back, or do you like this idea? Is it working, the idea of a sort of hybrid approach? Um, there are definitely some ways in, in which it doesn't, and then there are certainly certainly challenges with the hybrid. Um, when people are working from ho home mm -hmm. and some are in the office, you know, meetings, then, mm -hmm. you know, you have to use a platform. Uh, Microsoft Teams is, is our platform mm -hmm. that we use for, and, you know, making that connection as well. When people aren't in the office, of course, those connections are very difficult to yeah. maintain, and, and people working from home work different schedules at times. So the communication um, continues to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're working through that. But in, you know, in the HR department, we'll continue to find different tools that will help us to make sure we're getting that communication and the connectedness that, that we need to uh, keep our employees engaged and, and working well. Awesome. Jen, you recently launched a platform that allows really anyone in the world to benefit from mindfulness training meditation and other types of tools. Can you just tell the audience a little bit more about this project? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, interesting. It wasn't on our radar uh, pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, we were really focused on corporate programming and mindfulness, development of emotional intelligence, conscious communications, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the supportive practices, methods, and teachings that people can learn very easily. Uh, when COVID hit, we had to, as a young company, really pivot and consider, okay, how are we going to do our work now since this hybrid model that we were using uh, was really eliminated? Mm -hmm. And the platform that we just launched on Monday just connects people, whether they're working from home or they're dialing in from their office, to have access to expert teachers from around the world in the fields of mindfulness, yoga, tai chi, qigong, other healing modalities, um, and they have short practices where they could just kind of pause in the middle of the day, learn how to breathe, use meditation techniques, um, 
learn how to stretch out their backs and wrists and hips uh, just from sitting all day. Mm -hmm. um, what we're noticing is that people are working much longer hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're not able to walk into the break room. They're not able to jump into a breakout room and collaborate. So they sit in front of their computers for hours and hours and hours. And it's those transitions are meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, so without them, you know, the body's aching, the mind is aching, and we get very, very fatigued if we don't implement some rituals. Thank you. Uh, we're going to do an email question. Matt, I'm going to pose this one to you. Uh, the question is, does it matter where I'm working from or do I really have or do I really have to be working from home? And I'm going to be honest here. Two images came to my head. One is working on the beach. <laughs> the other is working in like a co-working space. But does it really matter? Does it really matter where that environment is? Well, I mean, I certainly think you want to take uh, all of the precautions that are trying to be established by working from home into account. But once you do that, I think there are some things that you really want to do to make sure that you're successful. I think putting together an environment, and even when you talk about working from home, the environment, and I love how we're talking about this idea of the things that we haven't taken into account that we need to start taking into account to be really successful. So from the email, I think it's really important how you set up your office, where you set up your office, and make sure it's a space where you can focus you can provide you know, individual attention to the people you're working with. I think internet connection is tremendously important, but I know that a number of people have said, you know, I work from my bedroom, and that runs into a, a huge problem because at night they're having trouble getting to sleep because all day they're working in there, and that's their environment to be creative and to think through hard problems, and then when they try to switch over to go to sleep at night, it just doesn't work, and they're up thinking about the job, just like they should be, because that's their office now. So we ask people to make sure environments, no matter where they are, are suitable for the work that you're doing. And, and that becomes really important. I think this is going to be something that we need to continue to talk about, but it's something that we really need to think about. Let's stop trying to jam the old ways of doing things into this new normal, as people call it, and, and start thinking about how do we reinvent the workspace so that it does address some of the needs that we have individually and from an organization. Monica, a quick question for you. It's sort of a follow-up to what was referenced earlier, which is there's potential significant cost savings to um, employers. My question for you is, have you guys taken any steps to provide um, either access to, to like co-working space or maybe a laptop or a desktop computer or any type of accommodation to make the workstation, if you will, the work life, um, you know, more accommodating to the employee? So I think right now what we're doing is we are evaluating our space because we have a, a mostly empty office right now. So we're finding a lot of empty desks um, and maybe it's only part time, but do we need to keep a full time desk for a person who's only there part time? Yeah. And so right now we have a very large building and three floors on, on a building that a lot of people aren't they're not sitting at their desk right now. So it's really important for us to, you know, find a way to, you know, whether we're going to move people home or people are going to come back, you know, what is the savings that we can save if we don't need to keep a permanent desk yeah. for those people? Yeah, yeah, great. Jen, we're going to do another email question. This one's for you. Okay. Um, it's from social media, actually. I'm sorry. Uh, how can uh, I stay visible while working remotely so that my boss knows I'm committed to the job? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I think that leaders really have to adjust. I think, I think there's a lot of pressure on leadership right now, especially mm -hmm. supervisors and managers, because they've also been thrown right into this new uh, situation. And they're being asked to adapt very quickly. Um, so there's skill sets that are important and flexibility, adaptability, very clear communications very direct communications, mm -hmm. empathy, mm -hmm. and a whole lot of trust. Yeah. Because the workday doesn't look the same anymore. You mentioned that there's different schedules happening um, and it's, it's really necessary, especially for working parents. So I know that some of my employees with young children at, that they have to attend to during the day, they're getting up at 4, 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and knocking out a couple of hours of work before we even get to our desks. Um, they're taking different schedules 
our projects and doing work over the weekend. Um, so I think this quality of openness and curiosity about how we can reimagine the flow of work is really important too. Thank you. Um, Monica, we're gonna jump back to you if you don't mind because uh, there's another employer question. This one's from email. Uh, can I get reimbursed uh, by my employer for expenses like Wi-Fi, laptop usage, and so on. And, and, and think about that more from the perspective, if you're not doing it now, would it be something you'd consider in the future? I think those are certainly things that need to be looked at by each company and, yeah. and things that they want to provide to their employees. If, if that's the way they want to go and they want their employees to, to work from home and it's going to save them on space and they should certainly visit that yeah. um, and doing those reimbursements for those types of things. Yeah, yeah, and what I'd say as an employer as well is that, again, I, as I referenced earlier, we're kind of in a wait and see, right? right? We're collecting as much information as possible. Some of the things that come to my mind are like, how can we measure productivity? Are we maximizing communication? Um, to, to, to some of Jen's expertise, how are people feeling? How are they doing? We're under a tremendous amount of, of, of stress and pressure. Matt, I'd like to come back to you. Um, you know. One of the things that I think that, that, that you've already reflected in some of your comments is this idea of technology and tools being used to kind of replicate what you know, uh, an employee could get in the work environment. Are there one or two tips that you have that you have found in working with lots of different organizations that are the must-haves? These are the things that if they're not doing, they should be doing right now. Give me that from the employer and the employee if you don't mind. Yeah, and I think in order to answer that, I'm gonna take a little different approach than what was just said. I think it's absolutely essential that we start to embrace that this is happening. I think this wait and see kind of modality is certainly one way to approach it. What I do know is that in the very best organizations, they're offering reimbursement for internet services. They're jumping ahead at this. The, the new brag out there is how many employees do you have working for you from different states? Companies are embracing this idea that we can get the best talent available by not just sticking to our local area, but building out both a hybrid model that takes care of the employees that are local and those that come to us from different states. So I really want to just stress this idea because what I have read in, in some of the research is that, you know, employees are willing to take about 8% less in salary just for the opportunity to work from home. And then when they get the chance to work from home, they work harder so they can prove that it's working. They actually are more accountable to their leaders and, and will reach out more often. And then there's some, you know, certainly some tips from an employee that you can uh, put out there, which is talk to your boss about how you like to be communicated with. The old, you know, we're gonna send an email and then I'm gonna send another email may not work. How do you maybe do a text message once a week, just updating them? I think the trust piece is so important but I do think the process piece is really important here and starting to think through what's the process in this new world and how do we establish that? Having questions like, do we need to acknowledge every email that we get? Because before we would just run into someone in the hallway. So now do we have to do read receipts or do we have to you know, acknowledge that an email came in and having that conversation becomes really important. The flexibility for organizations is a tip that I would absolutely recommend is now with people having some opportunity for the whole day to be their workspace, allowing them to have the flexibility to figure that out. So maybe it is starting really early in the morning or it is you know, extending into the evening. The most important thing that I heard was we definitely want breaks and establishing those breaks in that process. And something as simple as saying that every meeting is gonna be on Zoom, no matter who is where in this process. Even if you're in the office and you have a group in the office, if you establish a meeting policy where everyone's on Zoom, it treats everyone equal, and there's never any kind of run up against those office politics. So some tips that I think are really important really come down to those, let's take this on, let's have some process in place, some structure in place, and let's really start to engage how do we transform ourselves to be those amazing organizations that ultimately think through what we're doing, think through the culture, and really pay attention to you know, each of our employees and make sure that they're being, you know, rewarded for this wonderful challenge that they're on. Thank you. Let's get a final interactive question here. This one's from email. How can I feel more connected to others while working virtually? Jen, what are your thoughts on that? That's a great question. Um, 
you know, I'm just thinking about the platform and I'm thinking about our account executive and she texted me and said, hey, let's jump on that one o'clock meditation together. So that's just a good example of some self-care practices that, you know, we could implement by providing them tools to be care to, so people feel cared for. Right? Because we don't have that human face to face interaction. How can we enjoy activities that aren't work related, mm -hmm. that actually refresh the system, you know, calm calm the system from any stressors or difficult conversations that they may have had or or projects that they may be planning for and do something fun together. Um, that that's certainly working for us and it's working for our clients. Um, additionally, we have daily check ins. Mm -hmm. um, and those daily check-ins are just 15 minutes, the whole team, uh, we, we just go on Zoom and say, hey, where do you need support? Where are you stuck? What's working well? And it's quick. Everybody has a few minutes to kind of get their to-do list out for the day. So I think those daily check-ins help. And then every week on Fridays, we have a retroactive together with the team just to say, hey, what went really well this week and what's still lingering? Um, to kind of flesh out the system before they go into the weekend. Does your tool offer uh, video? Yes, it's live and pre-recorded content. Uh, it also offers workshops, courses, and trainings mm -hmm. with experts in emotional intelligence and conscious communications, so some professional development work there as well. Thank you very much. So I'd like to thank our panelists for participating and thank you for joining us. For more information on this topic, please visit WVIA.org. And remember, you can rewatch this episode or any previous episode on demand anytime online or on the WVIA app. For Keystone Edition, I'm Chris Jones. Thank you for watching.